योग कर्मसु कौशल Hello, all of you. My self is uh, Farzan Parabia, and uh, I am going to take a lecture on uh, various strategies applied for molecular cloning. So, in molecular cloning, there are two components basically. One is a PCR product, and second, which is known as a cloning vector. We insert PCR product into cloning vector through the help of restriction digestion. and ligation then we insert vector into bacterial cell through transformation from that bacterial cell who are transformed we culture on a petri plate and from isolated colony we pick up the cell we again do pcr to confirm that the inserted sequence in a vector is actually the right sequence of a pcr product this is a natural concept of a molecular cloning now in these particular concepts there are several products are available in the market and that product have a different chemistry so in today's lecture we are going to see that what are the different options are available for this molecular cloning with molecular cloning the other word we are used to familiar it is a transgenic organism what is the difference in between that in transgenic organism we are uh, inserting a gene sequence into a cell that it is going to incorporate into the chromosome if it is a eukaryotic organism and then it alter the nature or certain characteristic of a organism that is called as a transgenic uh, organism the difference between molecular cloning and transgenic organism in molecular cloning your uh, vector is going to replicate and increase its copy number but your inserted sequence is not going to be expressed in a terms of production of a protein where in transgenic organism whether it is a bacteria or a human the gene sequence which is inserted it is expressed so what are the applications of this first molecular cloning that we have discussed the expression cloning that difference also we have discussed for sequencing dna sequencing when we are going to sequence a genomic dna at that particular time cloning is required to construct especially the dna lipases site directed mutagenesis it is a experiment in which from a gene sequence which you amplify to this you make insert only for possible for technique which is known as site directed mutagenesis that is also called molecular cloning what are the basic steps of molecular cloning the first step gene of interest we amplify to polymerase chain reaction from that up to the until insertion of a vector there are certain strategies which are available as i have said in the market which is actually our topic of talk for these strategies there are certain common steps first step is a restriction digestion in which we digest pcr product and we also digest that then that digested product is uh, purified to a garros gel process so after digestion certain fragment are the stage we purify from agarose then your purified pcr product and vector both are going to be ligated and that ligated product which is called as a positive glue when you insert in a bacteria and bacteria replicate after that you again isolate that and do sequence to confirm that your product is properly inserted from bacteria you have to transfer that into expression cloning which is called as a sub cloning expression cloning has a different vector which are called as a expression vector for that we are going to see uh, in little bit later on slides in expression cloning orientation is very essential so your gene sequence oriented in the right way so your protein a right protein can be produced then expression of a protein you purify that and check that whether it is a right 
now in today's lecture what strategies we are going to learn the first is a restriction enzyme ta cloning blunt and cloning topo ta cloning flexi cloning polymerase incomplete primer extension sequence and ligase independent cloning glypsin dna assembly circular polymerase extension cloning seamless ligation cloning extract gateway creator infusion or gene art dye or multi systonic cloning application of linker and adapters and application of methylation so first we will start with a restriction enzyme based cloning so for that you have to design a specific primer who has a specific restriction site which we have and which is called as fibers limit normally this specific primer which target a specific gene sequence that primer length are 18 to 30 month one side we design is a blunt and restriction enzyme which is called as a blunt and cutter and another side we will place a sticky and cutter which has normally one to four nucleotide of a over so what is the difference between this blunt and sticky end because of that you have a two different kind of an end so your cloning into expression vector a directional cloning is possible through this kind of a restriction site for that we do double digestion double digestion means you add your pcr product or you add a vector and add both the restriction enzyme simultaneously in a tube this process is called as a double digestion one it should be sticky and which ensure the right orientation into vector this is a two examples of a blunt and cutter one is a nico one and the other one is a nde one to see this cutting site you can easily make out that it produce a blood and but uh, why these two enzymes are preferred because it covered the atg sequence here is a atg here is a atg now atg sequence it will work as a starting codon and which code for a methionine amino acid residue and it present in n terminal then it will be work as a first amino acid of producing polypeptide purification of a digested insert either it is a pcr product or so we run in a agarose gel electrophoresis with a dna leader and the right band is going to be isolated when we are doing sub cloning into expression vector with certain selectable marker after that we again do pcr from a vector it will confirm the proper orientation of your ligated sequence for that commercial kits are also available like a fusion pcr purification kit from this all this agarose purification can be done very easily here the directional cloning are uh, explained with a graphical diagram all these sequence of a vectors are available on a net and there are certain programs which we are going to see in subsequent slide when you utilize those program entire uh, restriction site of a multiple clonic site you can see on a screen always prefer that uh, never select two restriction site which are too close to each other because the restriction enzyme requires some space to bind with a dna this space is known as a buffer basis between the two restriction enzymes suppose here we are selecting hint tree and we are selecting kpn1 so you see there are many nucleotides in between there so whenever we design our experiment that always prefer that at least keep 12 base pair buffer additional nucleotide sequence within the mcq to select restriction enzyme then you have to add this sequence at a 5 dash end of a pcr primer through primer designing and then we further proceed for our cloning experiment vector preparation so in a one side you do 
a primer designing do a pcr digest your pcr product in another side you order a vector and then utilize the two restriction enzyme to digest when you are using two restriction enzyme the orientation of a inserted pcr product is possible if you are using single restriction enzyme then there are uh, two problems orientation is also one problem and another problem is a self ligation but self ligation can be minimized by utilizing a enzyme name as a thalp intestine or a shin alkaline phosphatase so what this enzyme will do this enzyme will cut the phosphate from the 5 dash end of a vector this treatment is not necessary for a pcr product it is only required for a vector so when this phosphate is removed the self ligation is not possible but pcr product can be easily inserted into the vector through the sticky ends and when this 5 dash phosphate is missing there is a nick you can fill up that nick in in vitro experiment also by again put into the pcr otherwise there is no necessary to fill that nick you insert that vector directly through the transformation into bacteria after entering into the bacteria bacterial environment has those enzyme which will recognize that nick and fill that particular gap so here when we have digested that uh, 5 dash uh, phosphate it will block from a uh, reclosure of a vector and when pcr product is inserted there are nick you can fill that nick with an enzyme t4 dna like is otherwise with nick also you proceed for a bacterial transformation so this enzyme alkaline phosphatase it has a two application in one application when you remove 5 dash phosphate from a vector it prevent the self ligation so it increase the numbers of a proper clones another application when you want to add a radioactive phosphate into a dna so for that we first it with alkaline phosphatase you remove the phosphorus and after that with the help of a polynucleotide kinase we may add a radioactive nucleotide this graph is showing that when you digest your vector with a single restriction enzyme or when you digest with a double restriction enzyme and uh, whether you purify your uh, vector with a uh, agarose gel electrophoresis then what kind of a effect you will get it these are the four different vector treatment procedures that we are going to read one by one and this is a high number of a clone so the most high number of a right clone you will obtain when you have digested your enzyme with two different restriction enzyme and stuffer fragments with uh, means after digestion what are unwanted fragments are created when it is removed by gel electrophoresis the second line it is showing when you have digested vector with a two different restriction enzyme the stuffer fragments are not removed so when these fragments are not removed there are chances that fragment itself is going to join with a vector instead of a pcr product so obviously your right clone numbers are going to be reduced so how we can measure this right clone number you have to isolate each and every colony again re isolate up your uh, particular clone and uh, obtain the dna sequence vector cleaved with uh, one restriction enzyme and uh, dephosphorylation is done so it will prevent the self ligation so right cloning numbers are more and the list number you will obtain when the vector is digested with one restriction enzyme and there is uh, no dephosphorylation so self ligation numbers are always there ligation ligation is uh, done by two enzyme e coli dna ligase and bacteriophage t4 dna ligase t4 is uh, more efficient and uh, preferred it can join a blunt antenna dna also so blunt antenna dna ligation 
that efficiency is always less in compared to the sticky and the DNA ligation. So both vector and PCR product are going to be mixed. One nanomolar vector, it is a 50 to 100 nanogram. In 20 microliter is normally volume of a reaction mixture. Insert is a PCR product. It is taken with a vector in a molar ratio of 1 is to 1 or more than that 2 is to 1 or 3 is to 1. When your PCR ratio is product ratio is higher than a vector, then your chances of getting the right clone is increased. Buffer is having trace SCL, MgCl2, magnesium is working as a co-factor for uh, enzymes. DTT, it will be utilized for stabilization of enzyme, ATP and a bovine setup albumin. We cap for 2 hours at room temperature and ligation is done or for overnight you cap at 16 degree Celsius. Blunt and fragments are less effective for ligation. For blunt and you take a high concentration of a PCR product high concentration of a ligase enzyme, you reduce the concentration of a ATP which is there into the reaction uh, buffer and uh, add a polyethylene glycol. Programs available to design the experiments. So why we require such kind of a program? It will identify the restriction site which is present on a primer which is present on our PCR product and uh, which are present on a multiple cloning site of a vector. After ligation, how the plasmid are insert are going to be combined at a DNA sequence level, which you virtually visualize with this software and primer design. So you select a sequence of a restriction enzyme from multiple cloning site and that you add at a file based region of a primer that is called as a primer design. So web cutter 2, restriction mapper version 3, NEB cutter 2, primer 3, AP, a plasmid, editor, DNA, strider, serial cloner and uh, clogen, clogen. These are the major softwares available on an online basis or you may download and utilize them. They are freely available. These are certain examples of uh, E. coli expression vector. Means you clone it into the E. coli. But uh, cloning vector uh, does not uh, have a mechanism that they can uh, amplify the protein. If you want to amplify a protein and utilize E. coli as a production factory, as for example insulin, whatever the insulin injections are available in uh, today's market, they all are a recombinant product of Isherisha coli. So these are the certain examples of a uh, vector. This is an expression vector, so they have certain promoters. So when a presence of promoter sequence, your uh, ligated sequence is going to be amplified. T7, it is a viral promoter. These are the TAC and LAC promoters. Selection markers like ampicillin resistance, kenamycin resistance. So after uh, inserting our uh, gene sequence, when you treat the bacteria with this antibiotic, only those bacteria survive who have received these vectors tag and fusion sequence. This is a DNA sequence which actually code a specific amino acid which will be work as a tag polypeptide or a fusion sequence. And with the help of this fusion, you can purify your recombinant protein from a bacterial lysate. Protease sequence. So when your protein is going to be expressed, Along with that, certain vector sequence are also going to be expressed, attached with that recombinant protein. Sometimes the separation of a protein from the additional vector sequence amino acid, it is not required. But sometimes it is required. So there are certain protease sequence are inbuilt into that. So when you treat your product with that enzyme, your uh, actual recombinant protein is going to be separate. Origin of replication, this is required to multiply this uh, plasmid into E. coli cell. And these are the name of supplier companies from this, such vectors are available. This is a diagrammatic representation of uh, E. coli expression vector. 
So expression vector has a promoter and because of promoter sequence, your inserted sequence is going to be amplified. Shank Diogeno sequence where it can attach with the ribosomes, N terminal tag and C terminal tag. This, this is helpful to purify your recombinant protein. With certain fusion protein, fusion protein, it will be act to purify that recombinant protein by ligate with some column matrix. Protease cleavage site, which will help to separate your recombinant protein from this vector sequence. Multiply cloning site, where you can insert your foreign sequence. Transcription terminator, here your uh, messenger RNA production is going to be stopped. Repressor sequence, it will be act to regulate the expression of a protein. Certain uh, expression vector does not have a repressor sequence. So after inserting vector, it is continuously going to express the protein where there is certain vector, uh, vector which have a repressor site. So with this site, there are certain protocol by that you can stop the expression of a protein or you can start the expression of a protein. Here is the origin of replication sequence through that this entire vector it is going to be amplified. This one it put for a first nucleotide and 6000 means the entire vector has a size of a 6000 base pair sequence. This is a selectable marker. Normally, they are antibiotics. So, when you treat this E. coli with this antibiotic, only those cells survive who has received this vector. Second strategy, it is known as a TA cloning. TA cloning, it has a principle that when you amplify your PCR product with TAC DNA polymerase enzyme, it will give you adenine at the three dash position as an additional one without any opposite template. See this figure. This is a PCR product. Here is a three dash end. Here is a three dash end. And both the three dash end has a one additional adenine which is remained as an overhang from the PCR product. <coughs> now with that, you can get this kind of a TA vector from a company. In many cases, the company will provide already linearized vector which has single 5-T overhang. When you combine PCR product and a vector, they are going to be joined through AT hydrogen bond and then you can directly proceed for uh, transformation into the bacterial cell without uh, ligase enzyme and entering into the bacterial cell, the cell environment can seal them. PFU polymerase, uh, this is an enzyme which is preferred over TAC polymerase because uh, PFU having a very good uh, proofreading uh, activity and because of that, there is uh, no error is going to remain in a PCR product. So whenever uh, we are designing expression cloning, then PFU is a preferable enzyme. But the limitation of PFU is that, that like a tech DNA polymerase, they are not going to produce overhang A. So what scientists will do? They amplify PCR product with PFU, but after that, they add tech DNA polymerase, only add ATP and incubate that PCR product into the PCR machine. So tech will add that additional adenine at the end of PCR. This is an example of PTA plus vector. It come into the circular form, but when you digest with the XCM1 restriction enzyme, this is XCM1 here, 1442 and XCM here, 706. This number are actually number of nucleotide. It is readed from this number one and count in this fashion. So <clears throat> it will remove this intermediate segment, but give you this overhang T as it is shown here and then you proceed for the PCR product which has overhang A and perform a TA clone. Third system is a <coughs> blunt and cloning. Example of this vector is PPCR script ampicillin SK positive vector map. 
it has a one restriction enzyme which is called as SRF1 and it is available in the market in pre-digested form that means company has already digested that with these restriction enzymes so you should not purchase this enzyme separately and this is a sequence of this restriction enzyme digestion sequence and you can see it will cut from here so give you blunt end so in sticky end you have to digest your uh, PCR uh, product and uh, in another hand you have to digest your uh, vector also then both you purify from agarose and then you proceed for a ligation these kind of uh, steps are uh, not necessary for this uh, loading insert it has no restriction site required so you you do not have to design uh, that restriction uh, site at a five dash of your primer vector a single site is sufficient and uh, if it is a pre-digested then also you have not uh, ordered that restriction enzyme reaction requires just uh, one hour at the room temperature means you mix a pcr product you mix a vector and uh, then you add a ligase enzyme and in one hour the ligations happen then you used that uh, vector for uh, transformation purposes these uh, vectors information are available on stratagen website but this blunt and cloning has certain benefits so same way they have certain limitations also there is no directional cloning Efficiency also 10 to 100 times less in compared to the cohesive and because cohesive hand having that hydrogen bond so they can very fix very easily. Half of them they attach in a wrong orientation. Lots of plasmid they like it self ligation and do the recirculation. So when you have a truly transformed clones you have to again isolate that uh, vector from transform colonies and uh, proceed restriction digestion and see the pattern on agarose gel so that will make you idea that whether you are inserted properly inserted or uh, not if it is properly inserted the second step is to know the orientation so to know the orientation you have to amplify with a pcr by utilizing that same specific enzyme and then you have to proceed for a sequencing so after that you come to know that which are your truly clones which you have to then further proceed with the next step of your experiment next uh, <coughs> strategy it is a topo ta cloning based method the available vector for uh, this method here I have given one example PCR for topo product of uh, in vitrogen. So in this particular uh, product, no restriction digestion and uh, no ligation enzymes are required. In this particular uh, technique, the one enzyme is utilized that is topo isomerase 1. And, uh, in this particular technique you should not order this enzyme also what you order is just this particular vector and this enzyme is actually covalently bind with a vector you have to simply add your PCR product and rest of the things is done by that system only this particular technique it provide a direct, direct ligation of a PCR product without any restriction enzyme it is a five minute protocol and only a one step protocol is just mixing cloning and a PCR product, cloning vector and a PCR product. No ligase required, no post PCR digestion is required, no agarose gel purification is required and therefore no 5 dash primer containing restriction enzyme sequence addition at PCR primer end is also required. So in this particular technique, it has two component. One is a vector and the second is an enzyme. So this vector is provided into the linearized form and so that they have the 5 dash T overhang and that T overhang is already inbuilt in that vector sequence. With that vector, the topoisomerase is covalently bound. 
and such kind of a form is referred as an activated vector. So the linear vector already has that topoisomerase enzyme which is covalently attached at the three dash end of that particular vector and this vector is directly mixed with a PCR product. Now this topoisomerase 1 enzyme actually it will work as a restriction and ligase enzyme both action and it is reported in nature from a vaccinia viruses. What is its biological role that uh, this viral topoisomerase 1 it will cleave the host sequence and also rejoin the host sequence and this enzyme it detect the sequence C T C C T T by detecting that sequence it break the bond and by breaking the bond it attach with a covalent bond through the tyrosine amino acid residue which is there at 274 position in topoisomerase sequence. Now what topo vector is provided they already linearize and having that topoisomerase sequence and when you combine your PCR product at room temperature within 5 minutes it will do ligation through that TA cloning principle. So you can see that this is a T overhang on both the side of this double stranded vector and with that this topoisomerase is covalently bound. This is a PCR product which has overhang A. So principle is a TA cloning but only advantage that there is no restriction digestion and no ligation. A separate enzymes are required. You mix both and you see this way TA they annul and this topoisomerase which is already present with this vector it will do the process of ligation and the vector is ready for transformation. Flexi cloning it is provided by Promega. This is a directional cloning method utilized to express the protein coding region. So when we are planning to express any sequence in a host cell then we require the expression vectors and when you clone in normal E. coli to just uh, maintain and amplify that numbers it required the normal molecular cloning vectors. So many times you have to shuttle your sequence from cloning vector to the expression vector. So for that this particular uh, flexi cloning, they have uh, several uh, options of uh, clones which is already there into that list. That particular uh, vectors <coughs> have a SGF1 restricts enzyme site, it will give sticky end, and uh, PMEL restricts enzyme site, it will give you blunt end. This is the sequence of uh, SGF1. You can see that it will cut from here, it will cut from here and give you the sticky end. This is a PME1. It will cut from this point and cut from this point. It will give you the blunt end. Now, you utilize this vector and uh, cut from this particular slide to the cloning vector, insert your uh, PCR product and then transform into the normal E. coli cell. At a time of a gene expression, you re-isolate that, utilize the same enzyme, cut the cloning vector, cut the expression vector and then you transfer this segment into the expression vector. So for doing all these things, you require uh, some software. So Promega company itself has launched a software which is uh, freely available on their website. By utilizing that software, you can insert that vector sequence and uh, all this manipulation you can do first in in vitro and then you proceed for actually experiment. So there are many flexi vectors are uh, available in a catalog. 
these flexi vectors has a one another characteristic they are having the lethal gene barnes what is the application of that i will explain you in the subsequent slides and they have a another antibiotic resistance marker so basically this uh, barnes gene it is a uh, encoding for an enzyme which is a cytotoxic ribonuclease enzyme this enzyme is uh, isolated from nature from bacillus uh, amylo liqui facens bacteria and uh, this particular enzyme it will block the bacterial growth by a massive rna destruction so it will digest out all this rna so how this uh, system works before going to that principle first we discuss a little bit for the expression vector so for expression of a protein whatever uh, our host cell according to that the expression vector have its property if you are selecting e coli cell like i have said that uh, e coli many time utilizes a factory to produce recombinant protein insulin is an example so for that such kind of uh, flexi vectors are available these are the examples of flexi vectors so what flexi vector have actually they have these two restriction site and these two markers so they are all as a flexi vectors if you are utilizing some mammalian cell line then uh, these are the examples of flexi vector if your intention is in vitro transcription and uh, translation so transcription is a production of uh, rna and translation with the protein is uh, formed for that cell is required but uh, not necessarily if you lyse a cell take a extract of a cell then also within the in vitro condition messenger rna formation is possible and a protein formation is possible in which condition we require such cell free expression this is required when we want to produce some rna probes through natural mechanism when with this we require when uh, we have to produce a capped rna which is ready to transfer in any cell and this technique is called as a micro injection this is called as a transfection in which you insert that active rna even into the any kind of organism for a therapeutic purpose why we require in vitro synthesis uh, of a protein in a cell free extract when we want to identify a gene product without directly inserting into the cell because to insert into the cell then also there are several limitations it has to incorporate uh, into the chromosome retain into that and then it will express and for that you require either a continuous uh, growing cell line or you have to do experiment on some animal so many time if it is a higher animal then there are certain ethical issues and uh, another uh, hurdles are also there so before uh, inserting into the higher organism you may identify that gene product like uh, these kind of a uh, approach also localization of uh, mutations through synthesis of uh, truncated uh, gene products so many time gene is too large it has exon and intros so many times uh, scientists uh, start to re retain a sequences one by one so they can identify that uh, which sequence has which kind of a role certain proteins they express in cytoplasm and then they move into the certain cell organelles so through this kind of experiment we come to know that which particular sequence it will be act as a transect peptide and help, help that uh, product to reach up to that cell organelles protein folding studies incorporation of uh, modified or uh, unnatural amino acid for a uh, functional studies so in this experiment instead of a normal amino acid we incorporate certain another amino acid which mimic as a amino acid but the structure is little bit different so uh, whether they have any effect if they won't have any effect then such kind of a labeling persons they may be utilized over expressed uh, product if it is a toxic for the host cell so you want that product but when you are going to get that product from inserting that gene into the live cell live cell is going to be die so instead of that cell free environment is utilized
when product is insoluble or uh, form a inclusion bodies at that particular time cell free environment is a good option protein undergoes rapid proteolytic degradation by intra cellular protease so cell itself has a certain protease enzyme which will degrade that recombinant protein so in that case this is option now we see how this particular flexi cloning it works and what is the role of that uh, lethalgy this is a pcr reaction the primer are designed which are having at a 5 dash end sgf1 and another primer is having pmel1 you do the pcr reaction and now your product has that particular restriction site at a 5 dash end you <coughs> digest that pcr product with these two restriction enzyme simultaneously you digest the flexi cloning vector also with these two enzyme so when you digest cloning vector it will take out that lethal gene barnes gene and this particular vector now tactically we have to run on a agarose gene and with the help of a dna later you have to select the correct size of this digested vector and uh, separate it out with this separated segment now in this particular technique there is no need of agarose purification you combine directly with a digested pcr product then what are the options maybe the original lethal gene will again join with a vector sequence or it will join with a pcr product in both the case after that you transform this vector into bacteria now when you transform this vector into the bacteria if this vector has this lethal gene then bacterial cells are automatically died and only those cells remain live which contain your pcr product so the agarose purification crucial step is automatically bypassed in this technique and cells are automatically selected because this lethal gene won't allow to be survived now when you transfer that from a cloning vector to the expression vector so same way you utilize these two enzyme one is a blunt end cutter one is a sticky end cutter so direction is obviously automatically taken care after digestion now you combine these two product without purification so what are the chances this particular pcr product with again join with a cloning vector this lethal product again join with a expression vector or this lethal product might be join with a cloning vector or this pcr product correctly join with a expression vector which is our desirable output now one thing you again focus this cloning vector having a antibiotic a as a resistance marker and this expression vector is having antibiotic b as a selective marker now you insert this entire combination into bacteria through transformation and it is a natural phenomena that one bacteria only receive one vector after that you proceed for a growing the colony by selecting this antibiotic b now if this lethal gene is present in this expression vector it will kill the bacteria suppose this pcr product join with this cloning vector and enter into the bacteria then this antibiotic b it will kill this cell because this cell has received the resistance for antibiotic a and only those cells survive which has the resistance for antibiotic b which is a characteristic expression vector and having a pcr product and not that lethal gene so complete uh, <coughs> agarose purification step is eliminated by this now technique number 6 which is uh, polymerase incomplete primer extension pipe in which primers are designed one and it has a characteristic 
TEV protease cleavage site. Now, this is a PCR product. Another and there are a specific primer which amplify the vector also. Now, when you amplify a circular sequence like this, your PCR product is always a linear number one. So you want required restriction enzyme to digest this vector. Number two, when you select a primer which has a distance, see, like this. When it has a distance, the PCR product what we get automatically this intermediate region is not amplified and eliminated from the PCR. Now what is this sequence? This sequence is actually that uh, Barney's uh, lethal sequence. So this Barney's lethal sequence from vector is eliminated through this kind of a specific PCR. Now you combine your product and vector simultaneously and then run a third round of a PCR. Now in third round of a PCR, your specific primers start to amplify your vector as well as your product also and give you your vector in which your PCR product is already incorporated. So in this type of a technique, no restriction enzyme, no ligation reaction is required. So this is called as a polymerase incomplete primer extension. <coughs> Seventh technique, this is a sequence and uh, ligase independent cloning slice. What is the principle of this technique? It also requires no restriction enzyme in low ligase. But it has a homology termini of the linearized destination vector and the PCR product. In simple word, the primer has additional sequence. That additional sequence, it has a complementary region with a vector. Now the PCR product and vector that you digest with T4 DNA polymerase. Now T4 DNA polymerase itself word is indicating that polymerase means it will synthesize the DNA. Now how it digests the DNA? You add this particular T4 is a virus, so virus DNA polymerase. So when DNTP is available, it will synthesize the DNA. But when DNTPs are not there in an environment, instead of a polymerization, it will do the activity of exonuclease action. And in this activity, it start to digest your one helix from 3 dash to 5 dash direction. You allow that enzyme for a certain time period, which is there in a protocol. So it will create 25 nucleotide long 5 dash overhang approximately. Then to stop that reaction, you have to add only DCTP. When you add only this single specific nucleotide in a reaction, automatically this enzyme is stopped. Now you combine your vector and your PCR product. Both are having the complementary end, so they are going to combine. And four nicks are formed. One, two, three, four you are not required to having a ligation reaction. You can directly do a transformation of this kind of a vector into the bacterial cell and bacterial environment can do that process of a nick filling and a ligation. Another variant of this technique, it will involve the principle of a polymerase incomplete primer extension sequence and ligation independent cloning and uh, overlap uh, extension cloning. So in which kind of uh, experiment uh, these three principles are actually required. When you want to insert a more than a one polypeptide sequence in a specific order one by one in an expression vector. 
Now it is not necessary that uh, one protein is a product of a single polypeptide. Many times one protein, an uh, active enzyme, it may require more than a one polypeptide. So <coughs> you may insert a multiple vectors having a different sequence but uh, then to regulate that expression and uh, having a synchronization between that it is uh, not in a hand of a scientist so they prefer that uh, all that required polypeptide should be cloned one after one now if you want to join such kind of a combination you have to design a restriction site which join two sequence exactly end by end. Sometimes it's possible. Sometimes uh, addition of such additional restriction site, it will alter the property of a polypeptide and which is uh, not a advisable method. In that case, scientists required to join exactly one polypeptide sequence after the another one without any kind of a additional sequence. How this is designed? This is designed by a technique which is called as this overlap extension. What is the principle of overlap extension? You have a one PCR product to a specific primer. You have another PCR product with another specific primer. Now you combine these both product and run a third PCR. Now in third PCR, there are a specific primer which has half the sequence attached here and half the sequence attached with a another helix. And then the PCR continue and the product will combine the first and second PCR products so or third product of a PCR is actually having the sum of both the length. Now this technique is utilized in this factor and uh, experiment is designed in such a way that both the PCR product are come and copied with this vectors, uh, vector sequence through the subsequent PCR. A technique is a Gibson DNA assembly. This Gibson DNA assembly is a same like a slide. It's like what we have did. We have digested one helix, created that uh, sticky overhang and vector is uh, combined with a PCR product and uh, that DCTP has stopped that exonuclease activity of uh, that uh, viral DNA polymerase. Now instead of a viral DNA polymerase, here you utilize another viral enzyme, this is T5 exonuclease enzyme. Now this T5 exonuclease enzyme is a thermolabile, means you increase the heat and enzyme activity is going to be stopped. So what we have did in a slice that we have to add that DCTP to stop the reaction. Here the addition of DCTP is not required. You just increase the temperature subsequently into the PCR. So after a certain time period, this enzyme is deactivated and reaction stopped. So you take a PCR product, a linearized uh, PCR product and take a linearized destination vector. You digest with T5 exonuclease enzyme, put the reaction in PCR for incubation. So gradually temperature increase, meanwhile it digests that at least 25 overhang that uh, single standard DNA and this way both the products are ready. Now these both are going to attach with each other. After that add a second enzyme, fusion polymerase is added. This is a thermostable enzyme. So it will start to fill the gap. After that tag ligase seal or the force link. So what is the advantage of our slag? That it is a single reaction. In a single PCR tube you add your Factor, add your PCR product, add that uh, thermolabile enzyme, add that thermostable enzyme. So when temperature increase, the thermolabile enzyme it is going to be destroyed, but thermostable enzyme it will still going to be active. 
these two products after digestion going to be attached with each other and then this nick is going to be filled by this uh, rusen polymerase jointed by the ligase enzyme so what is the disadvantage this technique required the cocktail mixture of three different kind of enzyme one is e5 oxonuclease fusion polymerase and uh, tag dna ligase enzyme so because of these three enzymes it becomes little bit expensive when it slices it contain only t4 dna polymerase number 9 is a circular polymerase extension cloning this technique has advantage there is no exonuclease is required to chew back the center halix this here product assemble which is directly with a linearized track no tt ctp is required to stop that exonuclease uh, action like the slick only a single enzyme fusion polymerase is required in this process so in this process the linear pca product and linear tractor both are combined and then at a high level with fusion polymerase the pca reaction is carried out so now this pca product it will be work as a giant primer and attach with this tractor then polymerase reaction going on and ultimately it result out into this way circular pattern there are always a neck but not necessary that you see with a like this to direct it to transformation and then the bacterial cell do the sealing of that neck thanks number technique is a seamless digestion cloning extract this technique utilized the bacterial cell extract and uh, in in vitro dna the assembly without utilizing the pcr on uh, any kind of ligation or any kind of restriction enzyme this technique can uh, join the, our uh, sequence into the bacteria this is a very very cost effective any laboratory bacteria can be used for the slice extract this is a example of a one strain e coli dh 10b strain ppy extract increase the slice efficiency vector ligated linearized through two technique one is a restriction digestion and another when we use pcr with a primer amplify entire vector and it we will get a linearized sequence in this particular technique we have to design a primer which has a five dash complementary homology sequence with a vector sequence slice reaction mixture it contain 50 to 200 nanogram of a linear vector pcr dna in 1 is to 1 or up to 10 is to 1 molar ratio 1 ml of a slice buffer which contain just a sphere and gcl to atp and ttp and with that one ml slice extract which contain a natural dna polymerase enzyme add a distal water to make a volume of 10 ml incubate that for 37 degrees celsius for uh, one hour and subsequently one ml of slice reaction was uh, transformed to the complement cell that means the natural dna polymerase has uh, did its role and only in cell the uh, lysat condition the pcr product is ligated with a vector this research was published in nucleic acid research in 2000 right next technique is a uh, gateway p donor vector it is a product of uh, in vitro this particular product also have a two vector one is a donor vector which are the cloning vector and uh, another uh, is expression 
the chlorine factor, and it is also referred as an entry flow. There are two kind of a recombinant reaction mixture: BP recombinant reaction mixture and LR recombinant reaction mixture. Gateway P donor vector. This is based on a bacteriophage uh, lambda sequence and uh, that uh, viral uh, proteins which recognize that particular uh, viral sequence which present into the DNA and then transfer uh, that uh, sequence into the another portion. So uh, for that there are two kind of a recombination, BP recombination reaction and LR recombination reaction. BP recombination reaction uh, is uh, required to transfer PCR product into the NT group. That sequence from cloning vector to expression vector, then you utilize the LR recombinant uh, reaction. And when you combine that both the vectors, this sequence is recognized and your inserted PCR product is transferred from cloning to the expression vector. For that, the PCR product should has that ATTP1 and ATTP2 sequence which is tapped into the specific primer design. After that, when you want to transfer that sequence from cloning vector to expression vector, then you utilize the LR recombinant reaction. And when you combine that both the vectors, this sequence is recognized and your inserted PCR product is transferred from cloning to the expression vector. Creator product, this is also based on the virus uh, sequence and protein. The CREA recombinase uh, protein, 38 kilodalton is uh, present in bacteriophage P, which recognizes this LOPS P site. This is a LOPS P site. It has a, having a 13 base pair inverted repair and 8 base pair uh, spacer region. So, this particular sequence is present on a donor vector, LOPS P and LOPS uh, P, within that multiple cloning site where you clone your PCR product. And when you combine with the acceptor vector, that is also have a lock speed. So when you add this uh, uh, recombinase enzyme, this sequence is transferred into the acceptor vector. Then with this sequence, there is a selectable marker. So you have that antibiotic added into the media and uh, only those bacteria will survive which has contained that acceptor vector. Infusion clone tank tactic in which more than one PCR product, it has a complementary region. They are digested by infusion enzyme. So they will having a 15 base pair overhang complementary region. It attach exactly with each other in the right orientation and combine into a single vector. So when you want to clone a protein, which is uh, coded by more than one polypeptide, and you want to attach all the polypeptide in a specific sequence, then this technique is useful. You can clone this kind of a more than a one polypeptide through manual method. This is a dye and multisystolic cloning. Example of PTA vector, digest your uh, PCR product by uh, adding that uh, restriction site at a 5 dash end of a primer, as for example, NICO1 and BAM H1 and code it to that. When you design a BAM H1 site, also add a one additional and H even site. So the next subsequent PCR product, it must have N H even at one side and warm H1 into the other side. And this way you subsequently clone more than a one PCR product. Next uh, approach is a linker and a adapter approach. This approach is useful when we have not incorporated any restriction site in the PCR primer. And suppose without that, you want to now add a restriction site exactly at the end of your PCR product and move for a molecular cloning. For that, you have two options. Either you choose linker or either you choose adapter. What is the difference in between these two options? Linkers are having a blood end, but after ligated to the PCR product, when you digest by specific enzyme, it will give you sticky end. 
So in this case, you have to order that specific enzyme also. In adapter, you have a one advantage. Your one end is a blood and one end is a sticky end. So first you add a one adapter and ligate it with a PCR product. And after that, without using a sticks enzyme, you have already have a sticky end. And so you can move for the vector ligation. Last technique, methylation. In methylation, there are prokaryotic methylase enzymes and eukaryotic methylase enzymes. In prokaryotic, we have three options DAM methylase, DCM methylase, and EPOK1 methylase. This DAM methylase, it will add a methyl group in N6 position of an adenine nucleotide when the sequence is something like that GATC. DCM methylase it will do methylation at sixth file position of the second cytosine in the sequence of like that the two CC are together AGC and CC EGG. In these two options it will methylase the second cytosine. Eco K1 methylase the adenine which is present adjacent like that. After that, whatever the cytosine is that, the N6 position of that cytosine is going to be divided. Same way in this, when adenine is present before cytosine, then N6 position of this cytosine and methylated is such kind of a sequence combination. In eukaryotic methylase, the CPG kind of methylase found in high eukaryotes, the example is DNMT1, which methylase at C5 position of the cytosine. The pattern of this uh, CPG methylation are heritable, is passed from one generation to another. Tissue specific means found in one organ, one tissue, and they are not found in another organ. And the correlate with the gene uh, expression. Means certain genes are expressed in which certain sequences are present or absent. Maybe a concern whether digesting eukaryotic or genomic here. So, if you are working on the PCR product of eukaryotic then according to that, you have to select this methylation example. CPG methylation patterns are not retained. Once the DNA is flowed into the material process. So, suppose uh, your PCR product is from a uh, eukaryotic sequence and you have taken the methylation. But after that, when you insert that flow into bacterial cell like the E. coli to amplify the number of copies at that particular time, this methylation is removed by the bacterial. These are the certain examples of a restriction enzyme like APA1. Then dam methylation site is not that which fall into this restriction enzyme sequence, so this is not affected. But DCM methylation it blocks the overlapping methylation. So this enzyme, if it is methylated sequence by DCM methylation, it is not going to break the DNA. Eco A1 methylation, it also not form into the sequence of AP. A1. These kind of uh, many enzymes have that and you can find out that which methylation can block the restriction digestion of these enzymes. Certain enzymes are uh, contrary to that like ADP and one require methylation for that group. If methyl group is added to this restriction site only that this enzyme can cut otherwise it can So if this methylation given restriction enzyme how it is useful for cloning. Suppose you have a PCR product and we know that this PCR product are having a restriction site and if you utilize to digest uh, that particular PCR product instead of uh, cutting from an ant it will also cut from the input. So what uh, first we do to utilize uh, this methylase enzyme to add a methyl group 
whenever that sequence is mentioned in PCR product. After that, you proceed with ligation of either linker or either adapter. So now adapter and linker group that methylase uh, activity is not at all that. So your restriction enzyme can cut that uh, linker and produce that sticky end which you may further utilize for cloning. So this way the methylase enzyme is uh, utilized for cloning. Protein uh, expression system. So after cloning, you transfer your uh, sequence into expression fluid and uh, expression vectors are highly specific because they have a promoter and uh, there are eukaryotic and prokaryotic different kind of a promoters are there which uh, only give uh, their uh, function into the appropriate environment. Like prokaryotic expression system normally Escherichia coli, Lactococcus, uh, Lactis and Bacillus species are utilized for that and there are certain uh, genetically modified strains that are available as for example the H5 alpha because uh, normal bacteria many times uh, digest it out to the foreign uh, DNA which is entered to the cell. These are the examples of uh, yeast. They are the eukaryotic fungus. Bacteriovirus infected uh, insert uh, cells. So there are uh, certain uh, animal cell line which can be infected by bacteriovirus and bacteriovirus is utilized to transfer uh, that uh, gene into the cell because uh, we have an expression vector but uh, how to insert that expression vector into the higher organism in such a way that uh, that cell survive and uh, also the inserted vector is going to be part of their uh, chromosome. So there are specific uh, cell lines are uh, available and bacteriovirus it is a one method to insert a gene. Mammalian cell it has uh, these kind of uh, options in which to expression systems. So without a cell if you want to generate a RNA or protein and these systems are useful and there are certain other e examples like the milk of a transgenic uh, animals. So whatever protein express that uh, detected into the milk for certain examples of transgenic. So thank you very much here I am uh, ending my uh, lecture. Thank you.